Well, good morning. It's always so much fun to be back at Lake Harriet. And thank you for that introduction. That's kind of what we're doing today. It's going to be all about consciousness <laughs> and miracles. Of course, that's kind of my thing. That book is, that bio, bio must be very old because that's my old book. <laughs> I have a new book out now. Um, I'll actually talk a little bit about today. Uh, but I, I, I noticed that, that the theme for this month is uh, when we align. And uh, I love that theme. That is, that is really my theme for life. It's been the guiding principle, basically, of all my work for, for decades now. I mean, I've been, <laughs> that bio um, uh, tips you off to, I am a million years old. I've been doing this forever. Um, and I'm all about experimenting with consciousness and seeing uh, just the remarkable things that happen when we align in consciousness. But before I get into that, um, I want to start with fear as a theme. Because, you know, we're in October. It, it's, it's the month of fear. It, it's the month we celebrate fear. You know, we can't go out into the world without seeing all the ghoulies and ghosties and goblins and and horror movies are out everywhere. It, you know, this, this is the month we love to be afraid. And, uh, and, you know, the reality is we really are afraid these days. In fact, um, uh, collectively speaking, I mean, uh, the, the American Psychological Association has been tracking our collective fear and stress for about the last decade. And they, they noticed in 2017, the last time they put out a report, there was this big uptick just in general stress and fear. Uh, I, I think um, more than half of Americans cited the political climate as, as being a, a, a huge contributor to their just everyday stress. Uh, two thirds said the same about just worries for the, the future, the fate of our country. And, and a much larger number than ever before cited just worries about their physical safety as being a, a you know, much greater concern than ever before. So, you know, there's just a lot of fear in the air these days. And, and whether or not you personally are aware of fear, and how many people are just kind of aware of greater anxiety in their life lately? Is anyone just kind of, okay. <laughs> so I'm not just, um, okay, I, I thought this would be, would kind of hit the, the, the nerve that we need to hit today. Fear is just in the airwaves, and, and I think if we don't address stuff like that pretty head on, we're just going to breathe it in in this very unconscious way, kind of like, you know, the, the oxygen in the room. And, uh, and, and when we breathe it in in an unconscious way, that's when it, it just starts to really kick us in the butt from behind and in ways that feel very out of our control. So today we're gonna heal fear. We're, we're, we're gonna do a healing service and it, it's gonna, going to address some of the, you know, the collective fear, the personal fear, and um, uh, just, just get that out of the way to see what kind of miracles we can create here. Because that, that really is, been the focus of my career, my work for decades. And I know what's possible when, when any time a group comes together joining in consciousness, uh, lives change. You know, things can shift very quickly and suddenly and easily. And, you know, and, and, and on this whole subject of when we align, this, this wonderful theme for the month, um, I want to mention two books that have just come out this fall. And, and both give a lot of, I think, very helpful and complementary information about the, the, this miracle power of joined consciousness. Now, one is mine. I, I'm typically not a very self-promoting person. But I wanna, I wanna just mention it because um, it, it goes very well with this other one. The, the, the book that, that I have out there, you can check it out is the breakthrough point. Now the other one that I just want you to go out and buy immediately is Lynn McTaggart's new book 
called The Power of Eight. And, and I hope some of you have heard of Lynn McTaggart. She's an amazing, basically a, a science reporter for a lot of years, reporting on the, the just amazing, mind-boggling new findings of, of the science world. She's written books like The Field, The Bond, The Intention Experiment, all reporting on science, but just amazing science, that, that line where science becomes metaphysics. And uh, she, over the years, she has become the researcher herself. And her latest book, The Power of Eight, is all about this amazing power that she discovered kind of by accident by doing these experiments. That when people come together, joining in a way that's about sharing rather than taking, uh, everybody wins. These amazing things happen. And, and she has, <laughs> She has addressed, I mean, she started with these little experiments, and then she worked up to things like ending a war. I mean, literally, ending a war. She gathered something like 15,000 people together, uh, I think it was in 2008, to aim intention over eight days at a 25-year-long war. Boom, it ended. I mean, she's doing things on that magnitude that are really proving, proving that consciousness is powerful, that when we align, we tap into a resource that we've never had before. Now, now my book goes about the, the same kind, it works with the same principles and looks at how we can just apply it to the everyday without waiting for a giant Lynn McTaggart you know, collective experiment, how we can just do that every day in our lives. And also, why now? Why this is coming into our consciousness and experience now? Because I personally believe that um, the power of joined consciousness, not just consciousness, the power we have when we join together to share rather than take, is an evolutionary wave that humanity is undergoing right now. And I think we can see it in a lot of very concrete, non-woo-woo kinds of contexts, like, uh, I mean, things as simple as crowdsourcing, as Wikipedia, as things that are internet-driven, that, that collect a lot of tiny little um, contributions from masses of people in a way that gives everyone this very easy, free, win-win resource. Like we're seeing that all over the place in every area of, of our world, in, in business and culture and science. And, and it, it's, I, I think, especially potent when we apply it to the realm of consciousness. That's what we're gonna do today. And um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, we're gonna work with a guided meditation here and it, it's gonna be longish, a little longer than I usually do. <coughs> But it's going to, first off, address some of the, you know, just, just the personal fears that we may have inherited from, we may be, have been carrying around with us since childhood. You know, the, the human side of us that's still carrying around a scared little child in there somewhere that, that got hurt and, and, and stopped trusting from life. Um, and I think some of that is, uh, maybe especially up this week, we, we've had so much rawness just from the news and the Kavanaugh hearing, and 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 just just the, um, if anyone had an opportunity to to watch Christine Blasey Ford's testimony, it's hard not to watch that without just going into a really deep raw place, and I think it brought up a lot of. Uh, I think repressed rawness, uh, probably especially for women, but I think for men too. I mean, don't you think, Bill? I know you often talk about the fear of being the monstrous male, and you know, I think, I think it just hits some nerves. And we're going to heal that human side, and and then we're also going to go more into the the consciousness that is beyond all that human drama you know, beyond the ups and the downs, um, to, to learn how to, to step into that consciousness and start to, to blend it 
with more of our everyday, you know, kind of stuck in this physical reality kind of consciousness. And then we're, go then we're gonna do a healing that, that's really gonna pull all of our energy together and aim it in the direction that each one of us most needs. So you might wanna think about where in your life do you most need healing? Is it your body, your mind, your circumstances, your relationships? You, you know, just think on that for a minute. Um, now this is kind of a longish meditation, as I said, so I want you to get comfy in your seat. Bill's gonna put some music on. I think I'm gonna get myself a little chair. Actually, I'll just take my, my notes right over there. And uh, I invite you all to just close your eyes. <sighs> just, just take some deep breaths. deeply and exhale just as deeply and just give yourself a moment to quiet your mind relax your body your attention float free and just let yourself gently transition to a soft open mental state and hold the intention that Anything is possible here. That we live in different times where truly different resources are available that we never had before. And you don't have to believe this. Just, just imagine it, just play with it in your mind. And just imagine that we are gonna heal fear. We're just gonna heal fear. Don't have to even figure out what that means. Don't have to believe it. Just play with those words lightly as an intention. <sighs> Breathe into it. And, and now just allow to come into your awareness, the, the child part of you that somewhere along the way felt abandoned or unsafe or disappointed or unloved and you might have specific memories come up with this just to see if you can go back to a time when you needed something that wasn't there for you you needed something maybe you needed something from someone it just wasn't there and it, it left an imprint. Just let it all come to mind. Just, just relax into it. Don't try and force anything. Just allow. And, and realize that, that that child from long ago who felt afraid, who felt hurt, who felt sad or angry, that, that child is still there, still present within you, still feels empty, afraid, not good enough. So in this moment, just relax in the presence of this old hurt. And as the adult you are now, picture and be with the child you were then. See what age the child is, what, what you were wearing as this child, and where this child is. Just fill in the, the details. And in particular, 
particular, observe the emotional state of this long ago child who's still very present. Is she or he silent, crying, scared, angry? How does the child show what's going on inside? And what or whom does the child need that isn't there? is this experience shaping this child? And, you know, let yourself grieve for this young person who, who so deserved better. Let yourself, as the adult, feel sad or angry over what might have been for this child if they'd been cared for differently. But also be aware that now the only one who can save this child and give them what's needed is you. So in this moment, reach out to the child and give the love, the protection, the reassurance, the affirmation, the support, you know, whatever was absent then. As the adult you are now, reach out to that place in you and give it now. Just give comfort. Just as a, a loving parent would reach out to a child in pain. Love this child as the most precious child of God. So often, when we were hurt as children, we stop loving ourselves. And as you give the love, it's been withheld for so long. See the child's affect begin to change. First from pain, to trust. Then into confidence. And soon into playfulness. And then into joy. And take this child into your heart now because the adult you've become needs this child in order to thrive. This isn't the screaming child that runs your life into a ditch. This, is, this, one, this one is the keeper of your innocence and your vitality, and your spontaneity and your creativity and, and your joy and your passion for life. You need this child. This child is your ability to have faith and trust the process of life. So let the adult and the child become one, no longer separate and estranged. This estrangement has formed the core issues of your life, the ones that have created the recurring patterns of pain and limitation. And if you've worked on these patterns in the past and they continue to surface, recognize that these times are like no other. That humanity truly is in an evolutionary step. That we have resources available to us that we haven't had before. We have the power of all of us together. This is a power that we're just learning how to tap. And with your eyes still closed, in your mind's eye, be aware of all the other people around you in this room. And, and each one is a, a spiritual being. So picture that, uh, many spiritual beings of light seated around you. 
And these people are also healing along with you. So as you just become aware that you're not alone, that everybody here is in a place of healing, open your heart to them all in compassion. Just imagine everybody's little scared kid kind of sitting next to them today. And open your heart in compassion. Imagine that together, as we open in this way, we do form an unstoppable force for healing. This is how we do it, by opening our hearts in compassion. That's what taps this incredible resource. And imagine now that, that, that we create a field of energy together as we do this. Love is energy. In fact, all energy, if you really explore the science to the nth degree, all energy is love. So imagine yourself now held in a web of healing light that we create together in this room. It's so easy and lifts you into realms of healing and thriving that were never available to you before. And here's where we go a little deeper. Here's where we go deeper. Just imagine that the dense matter of your physical body is becoming less heavy. And in your mind, just imagine that you can start to see the cells of your physical body lighting up and becoming radiant with this energy. All the particles that make up your body are becoming less dense. The molecules, the atoms, the subatomic particles are all just spreading out vibrating in beautiful light, light that is the energy of love. And in your imagination, even look at your hands and see that the physical matter of your hands and your arms is, is becoming transparent. It's no longer so solidly dense and opaque. And in fact, the outline of your entire body is becoming something shadowy, and vague, and, and your focus now becomes very broad on everything and on nothing. There's a dissolving and a melting taking place. It's, it's not really one you can see or define or completely comprehend, but you know it's, it's all in divine order. This is part of evolution. And parts of you just start to relax that you didn't even realize were tense. You set down burdens that you didn't even realize you were carrying. Maybe big, heavy loads you carried into this room with you, now you just sat down. You can feel a layer of defensive armoring in your body that you maybe never even knew was there uh, until now when it's, you can feel it melting, it melting away. And all kinds of solid forms that you've been holding in place just turn to smoke, releasing you from illusionary obligations. Things that you thought were carved in stone truth suddenly become more fluid. All the things you thought were impossible suddenly are within reach. Things that were frozen become fluid. Everything you thought you knew is becoming fuzzy. What was sharp has become soft. And the past and the future even melt away in, into just one continuous now. And now there's nowhere to be, nothing to do, nothing that's knowable. So you surrender. Internal pressure gives way to peace. The boundaries of your imagined self just start to soften and blur so there is no real inside and outside, no here, no there, no object, no space as all things blur together in continuity. And 
in the softening, there's not even really any you. There just is. And this blending and merging and flowing into oneness, it's, it's not frightening, it's not confusing, it's just peaceful. There's peace. Deep peace. And peace gives way to something even greater, something wordless and ecstatic. And just relax into it. Into one. this ocean of oneness, you become aware of your own inner light. Your light that is one with all that is, yet still uniquely your own. And within this light, all your needs are met. There's perfect peace. There's contentment with what is. There's all the happiness that you've ever wanted. There's no desire to aspire to anything because everything is here. You are whole, complete. There's nothing to want because nothing is missing. There's nothing to resist, nothing to distrust. No past, no future. There just is and all is well. And in your mind, you can see all of us in this room together, everyone's light just shining so brightly, nothing dimming it anymore. And with each person you imagine here, you can, you can see the vague outline of their human body through which they express their light in this physical world. But these physical outlines, they're the, the pale, shadowy part not the real part. Mainly you see their lights. And with no solid boundaries, we merge in light and it's a delight to blend this way. Each person's light is wondrously unique, all their own. And now just imagine beyond this room to all the people in your life and, and see if you can imagine these people as well as bright lights shining through this shadowy, not real outline of their physical form. And, and you become aware of just how inadequately our human selves interact. We, we clash, we disconnect, we get lost in all these illusions of our separateness and, and forget the truth of our oneness. But in this moment, know that no matter what the human relationship is between you and all the others out there in the world, that the only true thing connecting you is love and light. That's the only thing that's true. And, and just imagine this shadowy reality of your physical form, all of your physical forms, you and all the others, going through the motions of day-to-day -day life together rising and falling, sometimes in elation, sometimes in disappointment and fear and anger as all of our illusionary dramas play out. While the light beings that we are, truly are, remain connected in peaceful oneness, always whole, no need for hope or fear, just knowing love. And just imagine walking around in your world this way, your physical body, the shadow, the inner light, the part of you that's real. Imagine that you're seeing the world around you, in fact, from a location a little above your physical head. See if you can imagine that, changing your vision, your perspective, to a little bit above your physical head and seeing the true world from this perspective. And from this vantage point, all the material world realities, they just seem so inconsequential. They're just a playground for us to learn and to deepen and to evolve through all the challenges and the joys of physical existence. 
Just, pl just play with that. Walk around in the world, seeing from that perspective. And now, and now shift for a moment. Let your attention just drop back down into your body's perspective. Just feel that clunk back down into the physical world. And just, just notice how quickly it gets real. Yes, this is real. This is, this is what we tell us. This is real. How oneness just turns into separateness. How light dims and, and fear becomes what's real. And just be aware in this moment of how consuming this reality is and how easy it is to get lost in it. So it's hard to find our way back to true reality. But do that, do that now, shift back up. Your body, again, just the vehicle for shining light, expressing light, deep peace, wholeness, all that's true. That perspective, a little bit above your head. And, and now, this is where we become very intentional. Invite this awareness of spiritual reality to become an ongoing part of your perception. Ask to have this portal into higher consciousness awakened, this place right above your head. Ask to have it awakened so that as you go about your life, as you go about your day, you find peace in the midst of change so that you see the big picture beyond the ups and downs, the dramas of life, and that you become a stabilizing influence and a harmonizing influence on the world around you so that you thrive even in the midst of seeing a lot of struggle around you. You become the one who lifts others up. And you don't have to believe this is doing anything. Just hold this intention with all of your heart, with all of your focus for a moment. Hold this willingness to shift. And then just take a couple of deep breaths. We're going to come part way back, not all the way back, because we are going to do some healing now. And uh, you can relax now. Come on and open your eyes. Breathe deeply now. I am with you. Just take in the words of this. Oh, my sweet, sweet child. Who do you think you are? You are the child of God And that will never change This is a good song to just send out silent I love and bless yous to everyone you, had you can think a dream. of. You misunderstood. You thought we were separate. But now you hear my voice and you can relax now. Come on. you all. <laughs>